I missed your last meeting, so I don't know what kind of topics you asked us to think about for questions. Yeah, well, we talked about um, past lives and hypnotherapy, and I think um, some of the people talked about their um, either, you know, clients they were working with, um, different different things. So do you have any questions? You know, the, this, the topic is open. It's up to you all as to what you're interested in. So. Ah, wow. It's like a free form today. It is. It is. I don't have anything in particular planned. Okay. Um, well, anybody else? Let me think. Okay. <laughs> I have, oh, I was just going to ask about the full moon eclipse, lunar eclipse that happened last night. If you want to shed any light on that. I know it was in Sagittarius. Mm-hmm. So I um, don't know. Yeah, let me take a look at the chart today. Um, yeah. Actually, it, it happened not so long ago. Let's see um, the exact time. Hmm. Oh, no, this isn't telling me the right thing. Um, ah, lunar eclipse, that's the one. Um, okay, now I have to get into the right year. Okay, yeah, 26 at 11, actually 11.13, almost 11.14 this morning. Oh, oh, wow. Um, oh, that's universal time. I don't know why that's not giving me uh, Pacific, but so that was, uh, I don't know what time, and Bellevue. Four to five a.m. Yeah, four, yeah, four, four fourteen a.m. So uh, in, in uh, Washington here. So what does that mean? What, what happened? Um, they're usually very strong points. I don't do a lot with the eclipses, so I can't really tell you that much about it. Um, the full moons are a time that are really good to um, um, assess what has happened. What you know, during the new moon, you plant seeds, so you start ideas. You can start, you know, your business. Um, you initiate action, plant seeds, that sort of thing. And on the full moons, you take a look at what is happening and what's going on in your life and what you need to weed out, all right? So you've started projects and maybe not all of it is working together cohesively. And maybe there's certain things you need to stop doing or um, you know, relationships that aren't working that sort of thing. And I always use it for a, what I call a culling, you know, weeding things out and getting rid of the excess that doesn't work for me. With Sagittarius and Gemini, it's a lot around education, communication, um, travel, these sorts of things, um, which is kind of interesting. But the eclipses make it a stronger point and um, uh, you know, I don't know. It's a bigger event. Like I said, I haven't, I don't, I don't really work with eclipses that much. I usually just kind of look it up and, and, uh, see what other astrologers are saying about it. Um, can I share something? Yes. So, um, it, talking about this, just the all morning I've been sitting on. Um, so this, I try to wake up at, I set my alarm for four and then, um, I was meant, I meant to go and like peek and try to see if I could see, <laughs> the, uh -huh. see it, uh, the moon. And, um, I fell back to sleep and, um, didn't wake up till like, you know, seven or something. So I missed it, but I had this really striking dream that I've been sitting with all, all morning, mm -hmm. which was, you know, like, let's call it like, you know, that, that one heartbreak love from the past. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we were talking about, 
over 10 years ago now. And, um, but it's like, it, it, that person appeared in my dream very vividly and we were caressing and kissing and then he, and then he pauses for a second and and stares at me and says but you know we're never going to get married and like it then transitions into like you know something else and and I'm just it, it's like that moment of like but wait <laughs> you, <laughs> you know um of that like still that longing so I'm wondering if the energies from the moon to your point, like if it's like bringing that up and saying, okay, let's continue working on this or processing through this or, you know, obviously. Maybe so. Yeah. It <laughs> sounds like, it sounds like you're processing it, whether the moon is there or not. <laughs> <laughs> there you, you know, go. It's a time to process. Yeah. Right. And we have Mercury retrograde coming up as well. So um, and that's a time for kind of do overs or going back and, reviewing and reassessing things so um yeah you, you you know doing some hypnotherapy work around that would be really uh, uh effective i think and and helpful in just resolving whatever those emotions are and um you know bringing it to closure or taking a look at past lives and seeing where you were together then what is that soul relationship and whether there's future lives and what would need to happen you know how each person needs to grow or change in order for that to come together if yeah, it's definitely. together yeah i mean it's um it was a relationship that triggered a lot of like uh um similarities to my father right so like when I saw the relationship and I picked up on those patterns from my dad I'm like oh heck no like I put up walls and stuff like that but it just seems like to your point like like but but yet there hasn't been like a healthy relationship since then so like there's this something that that my DNA is carrying with it or my soul that is imprinted with it that yeah I'd need a knock on your door for some work <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, to figure it out, because, you know, even if we have a connection, and sometimes that distance creates longing, but it doesn't, it still doesn't mean that it would work out well, you know, once you're in the relationship, and you're in it for a couple of years, you start reassessing whether you should have been quite that um, excited about it, you know. Marilee, um, I have a question about, um, I have a client who connects with spirit, and uh -huh her spirit guides, and they've told her that this is her last incarnation on the planet. And I'm wondering if it's really possible for us to know that. That's her last incarnation? Like, like this is it for her. Like she's going to be, you know, in the spirit world, being a guide and all that after this lifetime. I'm like, do we really get to know that? You Not know? only that, but does that ever happen? I, that, that's my question, does it? No. I mean, even spirit guides are going to reincarnate into the physical world. We have to reincarnate in order to maintain our memories and our, our soul um, cohesiveness. Um, there is no last life. If you, don't, if you don't incarnate on earth, you could incarnate in some other physical world somewhere, but you will want to. But the goal is always to be on the physical plane. Is that what I'm hearing you say on some level? That's not the goal, but it's part of the process. It's part of the necessity in order to maintain our consciousness. So for instance, um, you know, if you can think back to maybe a meal, you know, something your, your mother made for you when you were a little child and you never had it again, but it was really amazing, right? Um, you know, wouldn't you want to have that again? Wouldn't you want to come back and experience that again? And over time, over, let's say, a thousand years, would you ever remember it again or be able to conjure what that was, you know, or the exact taste? And that's just a, a really simple example of that. But the same with, you know, if you're out in the, in the astral all the time in the spiritual world, you don't have a physical body. There's nothing physical out there. People think, you know, there's clouds and harps or whatever, <laughs> flames. I don't know what you think is out there. 
but there's nothing physical out there. It's all in your imagination. It's energy. We're just energy. energy. It's energy and and light and and things like that. But it's it's um, you know, eventually you'd say, well, gosh, I really would love to just hug my soulmate. I'd love to have you know a physical relationship with my soulmate. I'd love to um, you know eat chocolate, you know, or whatever, you know, to watch a sunset, you know, you would, you would miss out on everything. And so over time, those memories that you have of all of those events and those experiences are just going to fade away. But that means your consciousness fades too. So how do you become a master or a teacher in the spirit world? Or why would, like, are those people going to incarnate again too? They are the going masters to. masters and the the higher ups <laughs> they certainly will oh either here or in another plane yeah okay, okay. going to have to there's very few yeah I, I i don't even know if i can think of any that are evolved now there are whisperers and different vapor kind of beings that are not very evolved um that, that don't come into don't, a being of any kind yeah, they okay. would be more like... They, well, I they'd... kind of question it. I'm like, that felt really egotistical to think that I'm so great now that I'm done and I get to go be a... And I'm like, well, why would you want to? Because I hear that this is where you want to be. Yeah. yeah the, the physical plane is where we learn our lessons and have our experiences and evolve our consciousness, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I would definitely get a different psychic reader if, or different spirit guide if that's what they're telling you. Um Okay. Yeah, I mean, the only time I ever hear people talk about this being their last incarnation is either they they hate it here and they don't ever want to come back, or they think that they've evolved so much. And, you know, if they think they've evolved that much, first of all, you know, are have you just like resolved everything in your life? There's no more lessons to learn. There's nothing else to do. And then um you know wouldn't you want to come back and help others that you love don't don't do you not love anybody well enough to come back and you know lend a hand or help others to evolve she thinks she's going to do that as a spirit guide yeah um well we'll see <laughs> we'll see we'll talk about it when we get up there yeah exactly out that way the way you when thought when you see her coming back around in an, the next incarnation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just Mary Lee? Well. Yeah, Cinda. Well, I was going to say this sounds really strange, but I realize probably not at all to the people that are here. Um, have you done any work with numerology? A little bit. Well, um, years ago, I had my chart done by... Uh, I know her name so well, and it's not coming to me right now, but she wrote the book, uh, Numerology for Dummies, or co-authored it. Um, anyway, I had no karmic debt and no karmic lessons to learn. In And this was years ago that I learned this. And as the years have progressed, I have a very strong feeling that I don't want to come back. So I totally resonate with what Jan is saying that this is, this is my last life. And that's what I thought I would just ascend. And I'm the least egotistical person you would know. So it has nothing to do with that. It's Anyway, I thought back to that. Well, I have no karmic debt. I have no lessons to learn, at least according to my numerology. So I guess that was my plan. And I have ha had somebody else uh, in Santa Cruz tell me, I told her that I really hope that this is it. And she said, I can be done, that I am really close to the end. And if that's what I want, but I don't think of it as the end. I think of it as what Jan's client said, that I would just be doing whatever I need to do from up there. I don't need to have a physical presence and live that life. So that that's kind of what I'm 
thinking, but it sounds like you're saying that that isn't what we do. So how do you feel about not having any more karmic lessons or nothing more to learn? Has that been true over these past years? Honestly, I don't think so. I think that there are lots of things. Um, but in some respects, I think I, I, um, I guess part of me feels has accepted that and is and is okay with that. I think that I have been here a long time and I have learned all the, the important things. So um, Anyway, I guess I guess how do we really know? I I, I don't want to sound like I know ever because I don't. That's why I'm here. <laughs> but I guess I was just at peace with that. Uh-huh. Um well it, it, what I'm hearing is a contradiction. So a part of you wants to believe something that somebody told told you or based on a book that you read. And a part of you has um, evidence that maybe there's still some karma to work out and there's still things you could learn, right? Um, so that, that, that's a huge contradiction. And especially if you're using that as the, the, um, the numerology as an axiomatic belief upon which you base the decisions of your life or anything else that's going on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to do that for myself because you don't know, you know, mm -hmm. this is just somebody, you know, just like um, the other lady, what, Jan's client, where you're basing yourself, you know, basing on, well, I'm just out of here, but then, you know, you're not. So if you were, if you were, I don't know, I mean, I don't adhere to that belief system. So I don't even know what you would need to do to gauge that. I mean, wouldn't you have to be fully psychic and, um, you know, already enlightened and all that and do you you know do you feel that way do no feel i like don't you've done all of that that there's no definitely there. not um but um anyway i don't know it's just just a feeling that i'm i want to be done with this this i just want okay this to be, yeah <laughs> And I felt like that for a long time. One thing that I do know is when you do numerology, astrology, um, tarot, it all supports each other. I found that, which I thought was really strange in a comforting way, but they all bear out. Um, anyway, that was all I wanted to share. Yeah, I mean, they do all these techniques or all these tools do interweave um, tarot, astrology, numerology, um, you know, it goes runes, you know, a lot of them, you know, they interweave so nicely. I love it. In fact, when I was in Glastonbury years ago in England, um, I picked up a set of um, like druidic sticks where you do stick readings. And it, which is really fascinating. They, it combines sticks with runes. Um, and, you know, there, there's lots of ways to do the readings. Um, I had a friend who used to do readings with M&Ms. <laughs> wow. I mean, you could really pick anything. You could, you know, pick things in nature. You could use shells. You can use, you know, crystals, obviously. So I'll bet you did too. Oh, what? I you say? At one time you did tea leaf readings, you know, in some uh, other lifetime. <laughs> I've looked at the tea leaves, yeah. I've had readings done for me. Um, with the tea? With the tea leaves, yeah. Wow. Which is pretty interesting. That would be. You drink a lot of tea. Yeah. <laughs> and then because you have to drink the whole the whole cup and then they swirl it around and flip it over and then whatever the design is, Ooh. is what they read. 
but by then you're so hyper on all the caffeine <laughs> you're just right <laughs> it's good. but yeah um yeah it's good i want to say hi to jackie i haven't seen you in a long time oh you have to unmute Hi, Mary Lee. How are you doing? Good. It's nice for you to join us here. Oh my gosh. Thank you for having this. I'm sorry it took me forever to get here, but yes, it's so great to see you. Yeah. How's well, everything? And good. You, you're doing good. Yeah. So thank far. you. Yeah. <laughs> so far, so good. Um, right on. Yeah. Come. We're here every week now. Um, there is going to be a week. I think it's going to be the 10th of June that I'm probably not going to be on the call okay. uh, because on the 8th, I'm having a big surgery. So, um, oh, no. I, yeah, a hip replacement. So, oh, my God, having it? Oh, okay. on the 8th, Jan. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm ready, I, like, that would be the 9th of June. That would be the 9th. Yeah, you're right. My surgery is Tuesday. So, the very next day, I have the feeling I'm still going to be on a few painkillers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That would make for an interesting call. <laughs> yeah. Me and my pajamas. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Half asleep. Maybe Jan could run the call, huh? <laughs> Jan and oh, Jack and Cinda, all you girls, you could just run this call all by you're doing it. Good for you, Mary Lee. You'll piece of cake. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. But prayers for your surgeon and safe healings, quick, you know, everything that you require for the surgery, just yeah. angels all around you, angels all around you for healing. Yeah, thank you. Well, it took months to get on the schedule, so I don't want to change it at all, but it's going to be during Mercury retrograde, which oh. is okay. You know, maybe it's a redo of my ability to walk <laughs> so oh, you're gonna run after this you yeah, okay. feel like why didn't i do this sooner yeah, are you running are you able I to totally run? can do everything oh or i couldn't before yeah i, I can't wait i'm still so getting crippled so yeah you are it'll be fine yeah <laughs> i asked him to take a picture of my hip bone after surgery and he did he took a picture of the ball oh yeah <laughs> and i wanted to see the bone spurs and the arthritis yeah. and everything it's really oh, yeah. interesting yeah, I can't, I can't imagine you needing surgery, Mary Lee. I just see you as vibrant and right. you know what I mean? Like, that's how I see you in my mind, doing yoga, doing everything. Like, that's interesting. Being in a human body is very interesting, isn't it? How yeah. it just changes and shifts. It's interesting. It's yeah. so true, but I, I turned 70 back in February. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. So, you know, wow. they, the years do take its toll. So, yeah. Wow, well, you're radiant and you're beautiful. Uh, Seven. Wow. Yeah. Seventies new forty. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna take it that way, and I've got. I've, I'm gonna have a new hip, so I can be back running around like I always do. So, so we can plan a trip next summer. Okay. There you go. In a year. Yeah. 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 Okay. Amen. Yes. So. Um, I could do a couple of tarot readings if somebody has a question. Jan is ready. There's always a question. Okay. Wait. What's your question, Jan? Uh, it's always about change. You know, is, is the thought of change next year in my best interest? The thought of what I want to change, is it in my best interest? Okay. Let's take a look. What deck are you using? I use the Robin Wood. Oh, yeah, that's my deck. I love that deck. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> do you do the five card spread? I do a 10 card Celtic cross. Okay. Wow. Um, so, um, um, I don't know how much to say because it sounds like you're being a little cryptic. Um, so it seems like you are like, you've got a lot of energy for this. You're kind of jumping into it. At least your energy right now 
is let's just go for it, right? <laughs> kind of like um, a little bit rash, you know, a little bit jumping in with your Gemini energy. Mm. Um, but it does look like um, you're going to be thinking it out and um, you have some, you know, strong ideas about what you want to do moving forward. And you will find a way to bring this into balance where it's not just like overreacting, but really done in a balanced way. And um, it looks like a lot of alone time mm -hmm. in the end, you know, mm -hmm. more meditation, more um, just being in your own world instead of being affected by other people. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, without going into a lot more detail that you might not be wanting to share, I, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> So it doesn't look like it's bad. It's just that, you know, definitely um, do it in a way that's balanced and not like with anger and, no. um, you no. know, crazy stuff. Just keep all of that, the emotions in balance. Um, it does seem like there's some disappointment and, and some difficult things a little further down the road with that, though. With me or with the other energy attack? Um. That's my worry is the other energy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think you'd worry about that. Okay. But there's some disappointment because change is hard and change never yeah. works out the way you exactly plan it. Right. So, and separation and, yeah. and uh, you know, right. separate worlds, that sort of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That validates my thought. Yeah. The change that I want to make. So thank you for looking into that for me. Yeah, Jackie, you look like you were excited about getting a reading. May I please? I would love a reading from you, Mary Lee. What's your question? Um, I guess not change per se, but forward steps. I'm really trying to create more stability, financial stability and community, but I don't know. Anything you'd like to share or glean from the cards or intuitive hits, whatever. I just feel like I, I don't know exactly what's missing in my creating stability financially specifically and also just you know community love all that but finance is probably number one okay um okay so what is missing like we're looking for yeah what? like i need strategy like what do the cards say could be my next first step my most important step i guess if that's something i can ask well we'll see <laughs> yeah whatever you get is perfect Okay, I, we'll I trust the reader works through you. Okay, so it does say that it maybe it's time to talk with an expert, like either a business coach or an accountant or something yeah. like that, that you've been kind of independent and, and figuring it out on your own. Yeah. <laughs> time to get an expert involved, okay? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, yeah. What's your astrology sign? I'm a Scorpio. Scorpio sun, Aries rising, Saggy moon, Gemini uh, north node. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah. So, yeah. Getting, the next step is getting, getting an expert. Yeah, an expert. And they will give you a really good idea. And, hmm. um, and it also says that um, you've been paying, or you need to pay more attention to the details. So maybe you're not quite as organized with your bookkeeping or your money management or something that there's going to be more details that they're going to point out to you to, to track and, and look at. And then the other, the other part of this is just really going into your imagination and um, allowing yourself to have more options so yes. rather than just looking at, well, this is what I've done and this is what I'll do. And I'm going to try to do it, you know, everything around that, you know, really just write down everything that it could be like mm -hmm. all the options and consider, you know, like either um, having multiple streams of income, that sort of thing, like being yeah. really creative and imaginative with all the different options. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, yeah. and these are all things that, 
I know on the surface because I've been trying to make my business doing magic, you know, for going on business wise eight years and it's still just not taking off. And I'm like, what's missing? So, yes. Yeah, so, thank you so much. That, yes. I just well, feel like part of me feels like, oh, if I stop trying to do this, I'm somehow a failure or something like that. But no, do you know what I mean? Not at so, all. Yeah. yeah and, you. and also it says that you're kind of avoiding being too busy. Like you, you, you've been kind of avoiding having mm. too many plates to spin. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, maybe you do have to get more comfortable with having multiple streams or, or okay. maybe more discipline around okay, yeah. I'm busy for four hours today instead of like, oh, I'll get to it when I do, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Cause yeah, I, I living in Mexico develops a certain lifestyle, you know, yes. so I need to kind of get back in the grind of living in the States. And that's a different grind. Totally. So thank you. Mary. You're yeah. so beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate oh, you. You're very welcome. Are you in the Northwest again? Yes, I'm in Olympia, right, or Lacey, just down oh, the road. Yeah, down the road. Okay, cool, good. Well, welcome back to the continental yeah. U.S. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Are you doing anything at your home anymore? You used to have gatherings. No, not right now. Well, not right now. We've, you know, everything is on Zoom. All my classes and clients and everything. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But anyway, so anyway, so thank you. Sorry. You're welcome. Cinda, did you have a question that you wanted answered? Sure. It's not a very exciting one, but um, we're, we're kind of in the process of thinking about retiring in the next year or two. So mm -hmm. I guess I'm wondering when it, sooner rather than later, or do, you, do the cards say if it would be better to wait another couple of years or... Is it looking good for next year? Okay, so the difference is between one year or two years? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Thank you. Of course. What is it you do, Cinda? I've forgotten. Well, I'm a medical transcriptionist, and I would still do that and probably until my doctor retires, and he's older than I am, so it could be any time, but... I literally spend about oh two hours a week doing that job, so it's really not me. It's it's more my husband, and just will we be living the retired life or still still taking care of business for a while longer? Yeah, it'll still be taking uh, taking care of business for a little while longer. You're not really quite ready. It, if you do it right away you know, maybe between a year and two years would be better, but right away you would be um, a little vulnerable, I think financially, you know, it's not really quite, quite there okay. um, with expenses and different things. Um, yeah, I see it. I see you going for a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me just look a little further. Um, yeah, I, I would say between two and three years even. Okay. Okay. All right. Good to know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You might want to talk to like the financial advisor and everything yeah, just we've... you need. Yeah. Okay. To be prepared. Um, okay. I don't know if Danny or Gina want a reading. I can't see them. I don't know. They're there. They're snoozing. <laughs> they're probably at work. I don't know. Sometimes they put it on to listen and they're really at work or something. Um, any other questions about anything? Otherwise, we can have a short call today. Jan. I was just wondering what card you picked for my reading. Do you remember? I meant to ask you. <laughs> I don't remember. No, I can't. I can't tell you now. Three okay. readings later. Or what so. about a lot of energy? Was it the... the a king or a queen of wands? Oh, the first one in the middle was the knight of wands. Okay. Yeah, just kind of forging ahead. Yeah. Without, yeah, just with a lot of passion or energy. Got it. Yeah, that was in the center. Okay. Okay. Um, Dan? Hey, Mary. 
Hi, do you have a question, Danny? I'm back on. Well, I always have a question. You know, your your sound. Wait, wait, your sound is really terrible. I don't know if you need to be closer. We can't understand your word. It's her internet. I'm sorry, we can't hear you at all. Huh. Do you want to put a question in the chat box? Oh, she might be coming back in. And I think she was on a phone and it said 5G, and then we can't hear her. Oh, wow. Gina, did you have a question for a reading? No, it's okay. It's okay. I don't know if Danny's going to be able to come back in. Huh. Um, well, any questions about anything? And otherwise, we can reconvene next week. What's your topic for next week? So I can I think about it. Yes, why don't you ask me some questions or tell me what topics you want to talk about? Um, well, I'm always interested in the spirit world, obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything having to do with the spirit world. Okay, well, think up some questions and I'll be ready to answer them. Or maybe about mediumship. Do you do mediumship? I don't. Not really? Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So other, other questions might be better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something more I do. Um, hypnotherapy, past life regression, you know, mm -hmm. spirit world, all that. I have a question about how successful is it for you to take people into future lives? Uh, future lives. Well, you know, you can do it. It's, you know, because all of time is sitting out there in a big pool, right? So future, past, it's all really quite the same, um, you know, as far as going in and traveling to different places. But um, um, the, the question with going into the future is the danger of people seeing things and then altering the future. So for instance, if you go, um, you know, 30 years in the future, but meanwhile, you know, and you're going five years, 10 years, whatever, and then you see maybe that your child dies or that you get in a terrible accident and you're crippled or you get a disease or something. I mean, these are devastating things that then get stuck in your mind and then could actually keep you on the path of manifesting that, right? Yeah. And so it's hard, you know, if you have that in mind, it's hard for you to then be able to switch what we call aspects or parallel universes where you can move off of that future and into a, a more pleasant future um, because now you've got it stuck in your head it's sort of like when you go into the doctor and they diagnose you with a disease and they say well you have 12 right. months well 12 months come in your head right because you have it in your mind that that's when you're going to die and our subconscious mind is very um, excited about proving us correct. So mm -hmm. if, you know, the same with, you know, if we have negative self-talk, you know, I'm stupid, I'm ugly, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm going to be unsuccessful, my business is terrible, whatever, <laughs> then the subconscious mind says, okay, let's make that happen because we want you to be right. Right. So my dad was diagnosed and they, they gave him a year and literally he died in a year on the 12th month. They, should, they just shouldn't give you any. So mad. I yeah. was so mad about that. And, and he, you know, bought into that, you know, it's a doctor, they know better than anything. So, mm -hmm. um, Do you yeah, ever wonder? So going into the future can have a lot of potholes that you have to be careful about. Wouldn't and, it be interesting to go into the future life and then look at your past life, do a past life regression in a future life to see mm -hmm. which memory in this life you actually remember in the future life? Right. I hope it's not me walking around my kitchen in my ratty bathrobe. You know, like I don't want that to be something more important. <laughs> right. You're yeah. doing 
something more significant. Yeah. So when, when people want to go into the future, I'll take them like 500 years into the future or yeah. 150 <laughs> years or something like that. But um, going into the future of this life, I did it once with a woman way back at the beginning of my career. And, uh, you know, she got about, I don't know, five years into the future and it all went black. Now we don't know what that meant, but, you know, immediately I learned my lesson. It was like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to go here. You know, I the don't want to. The only time you do it now is future pacing when someone wants to achieve a goal. Right. And and them just, achieving that goal. Yeah, yeah. A few days or weeks or months, yeah. you know, uh -huh. that's just, you know, taking that trait and moving forward. But if you're looking at your future, um, you know, if you want to see the state of the world, you could go, you know, a hundred years into the future and then take a look and see what we need to do now to make that better. Mm -hmm. um, now we do have that opportunity of changing the future. All right. Um, you know, that's what's called free will. If we do something different, we're going to have a different outcome. That's right. And so, so, you know, you can, you can go and you can look at the different threads of future, you know, oh, here's one where I get sick and I die. Here's one where everything is successful. Here's one where, you know, something else happens, whatever. And then you can align yourself with that thread or that aspect and move yourself into that direction so that it's more likely that you'll have that outcome. But we get so tied to our past and we get so tied to our present situation that it's very hard to have that flexibility and that ability to, to make a clean cut over into another aspect. Right. Yeah. I mean, we do that all the time when we're holding grudges or we have guilt for something we did in our earlier years or something like that. And we just keep festering with that. Or maybe a crime was committed against us or something. And we keep identifying with it or festering with that. And it just keeps us locked into that instead of saying, okay, that happened. And I'm a new person now because that's not happening now. Right. So now I'm a new person and here's where I want to go and just really let go of all of that. Um, you know, maybe it happened, but we don't have to cling to it. Mm -hmm. So Thank you. do you have any ceremonies that you like to do to release the past to make sure it doesn't continue to have residual energies in your now? I'm sorry. Do I have any techniques? Like rit rituals or techniques? Oh. Um, yeah, it's more. Um, uh, more like doing self-hypnosis. So the same kind of techniques that I teach in the hypnotherapy course, I would apply to myself. So, okay. and a lot of it has to do with philosophy too, of looking at it with really clear eyes and being able to, you know, put that there, you know, okay, there's that memory that happened. That's who I was then, mm -hmm. right? But to really understand that that's not who I am now. Mm. you know and if it's more than seven years ago then that's not who you are in any fashion because all of your cells have changed the only thing that's keeping you the same is your consciousness right right so, you know you can change everything in seven years your whole body's different that's so, right that's beautiful yeah that is beautiful thank you for that Thank you. And you know what I kind of picture, if I could share the picture that came through, uh -huh. and was asking your speaking. Imagine that part of you, that person that you were, whatever you're trying to release, and I'm speaking this to me as well, is like, whoever that was that um, doesn't resonate with you anymore, just put her in a beautiful, like a bubble, just a beautiful little, like a, a bubble of it's clear, but it's beautiful and it's luminescent and just bless her and release her. Yeah. Just nice. her. Do you know what I mean? With yeah, love and great compassion and let her go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, in, anytime you are a human who is growing, yeah. you're always going to regret something in the past, right? Because yes. we were on a learning path. 
if you don't have any regrets, then you probably never did anything or never grew, <laughs> right? You haven't changed and evolved. You know, then you can look back and go, wow, I'd never say that again, or I'd never do that again, or mm -hmm. be with that person or, you know, belittle mm -hmm. myself or whatever, whatever it is, because mm -hmm. I've learned and grown and I'm this new creature now. But, yeah. you know, the only time we aren't going to have regrets is if we're exactly the same as we were back then. Right. So, yeah. so we really bless those regrets and go, well, thank <laughs> goodness, because it means that I've grown into this other person that would no longer do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yay. Do you, um, do you, um, in terms of dreams, do you have thoughts, opinions about that or working with dreams or analyzing dreams? I have a, a technique that I created for hypnotherapy called reverse metaphor, and it mm -hmm. works beautifully with dreams. And so normally with reverse metaphor, um, I have the client create a story, just a fantasy story, which would be like a waking dream. And then once the story is complete, we go back and we figure out what the the meanings of the metaphors, but we can use the same technique by having you go into the dream. And so then you tell me the dream and then we go back to the beginning and you tell it to me again, and then you tell it to me again. And you could do this as a journal project too, like starting at the beginning and writing out the full dream, every detail you can think of. And when you write it the second time, try to start even earlier than the beginning of the dream and add any other details all the way through the dream and try to extend it what happened after the you know like what happened at the, you know if you could continue the story and then do that a third time and all sorts of emotions and details and intuition and and knowing comes up and then at the end of all of that you go through and you analyze it but during the the initial part, like if I was doing it with you, we wouldn't analyze until you've told me everything three times. So the same with writing it, don't analyze, don't say, oh, this means that, or this is what I understand about that. Just, this is what I see, this is what I feel, this is what I'm experiencing um, through the whole, the whole thing. And then after three times you go, and then you can analyze what it means. Hmm. interesting yeah mm -hmm. yeah that'll help you that'll work any other questions or thoughts before we close today questions i wonder if i could just ask you to tap back into the reading you gave me um do you happen to have a feeling of who i should call for a mentor or coach was it like an accountant or a business coach or do you have like a more specific feel or just all the above <laughs> yeah all the above i you know i really don't know um okay. it depends on your needs for your business yeah um, it could be a business coach but also you know having a good uh, accountant who can really you know get your systems in order and show you what you need to be doing you know sometimes it's just not spending as much on expenses you know right. or you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, okay. I can't, can't really tell you. Any That's okay. Things. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you as well. And good to see everybody. So thank you all for being here today and joining me and we'll come back next week. So join yes. me next week and think about whatever questions you might have. And uh, we'll do that. And Danny, I saw your note and I'm sorry that we couldn't hear you. Um, maybe next time, next time we'll, we'll be able to hear you better. Mary Lee. Okay. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye Mary Lee. Bye. Bye. Bye.